What up dudes, it's Gaz, and welcome back to another Warframe video. So we're doing another revisited weapon today, and this is actually the third or fourth video on the Exorgist on this channel. But this is the most up-to-date one, and unless they make a Tenant Exorgist, which I really hope they do make, this will probably be the last Exorgist video. And we're going one step above this time with a Helminth Synergy as well. And yeah, this will be a galvanized build with the new Sister of Parvos mods and Arcanes. And this thing is super deadly. We went all in on the Forma, all in on everything pretty much. The only thing I don't have is a God Roll Ribbon, but the Ribbon we have is pretty good anyway. Before we get into it, make sure to sub to the YouTube channel and all that kind of stuff. And also check out the live stream channel as well to follow that. Alright, so the Exorgist. A lot of you guys might already know how this weapon works and what it is, but in case you don't, we're going to briefly go over the stats here. So, this thing is a one-in-the-chamber shotgun. So you fire it off, you gotta reload it every time. Unless you got some shenanigans with like art, uh, ammo efficiency or something like that. 8% crit chance, 1.4 multiplier. Basically unworkable crit stats. Don't even worry about it, you're gonna go all on the raw damage anyway. 30 to 60 damage fall off. With the new uh, Galvanized Acceleration mod, you can make this thing go real far. It's basically a sniper. 3.3 fire rate, who cares about the fire rate because you're reloading after every shot anyway. Three multi-shot, so it shoots three projectiles innately before you start putting a multi-shot into the equation. 0.5 punch through. It honestly feels like more than 0.5 punch through when you use this thing uh, because the pellet spread is actually pretty good. 1.6 second reload. Very important stat on this shotgun because you're reloading after every shot unless you mod it for two, uh, uh, two shots in the magazine. 36% status per projectile. You shoot three projectiles, so you know really high status chance. And if you put enough dual stat mods in here and galvanize uh, savvy and all that, you can get to over 100% crit chance or 100% status chance easily. And then for the base damage types, you got mostly slash weighted with also radiation, puncture, and impact. So very good condition overload potential. The only problem this weapon has is the terrible crit stats and the fact you have to reload after every shot. But maybe you can consider that a good thing in some situations. So with the build we have currently, this is about how fast you're going to fire it. It might as well have an infinite magazine because you're reloading this thing so fast. Alright, let's show the build and we're going to show a helmet synergy with this weapon. Since it's got such high status chance and has really high base damage, Zata's Whisper is actually really good. Have you even thought about this weapon, uh, this ability before? It's from Zaku. It's Zaku's first ability. You cast it, you get covered in infested goo, and it makes your weapon have an additional hit of Void Damage, and Void Damage has a special status proc that creates a mini mag bubble on the enemy. Basically, the projectiles will fly out and can come back in, and it can actually like make these crazy chains of damage where enemies are dying all over the place, just from one shot of your shotgun. So, you want to mod this thing a little bit for status. Now, you'll notice Vicious Spread on here. This is not necessary. This is basically just to make it cover more AoE with the gun. As the spread, there's not many spread mods in this game for shotguns that make the bullets go all over the place. Vicious Spread's the only one that can really do this. Um, Tainted Shell makes you have minus spread, which is the opposite of what we want to do here. Um, so if you don't want to run Vicious Spread just for the fun of it, you could definitely go for um, something like Blaze, something like uh, the dual stat mod, Toxic Barrage, or something like that, because we have Corrosive and Heat on here. I would not recommend going for Viral Heat because it's going to be... It, it might just not be as good as this. Honestly, this, this build has been working really well, and we'll show it here. As you can as you can see here, 8th Forma. You technically don't need 8th Forma unless you have a Riven mod like I do. This Riven mod basically just replaces uh, Contagious Spread. So we just get more damage overall. We go from 26,000 to 44,000. But you don't need that. So we're going to show it here. Prime Tech will pump as you reload every shot. Very, very good mod here. We talked about this in the past. Uh, very high status chance here that you galvanize savvy. Lots of potential damage added on here. Keep in mind, void procs do count for uh, condition overload. So that's additional damage as well. Prime shard shell and contagious spread making corrosive damage. So we've got corrosive from these two mods and we've got heat from scattering inferno. Uh, you do want to make sure you have some status chance in here because the extra void proc from, uh, from Zata's Whisper does go off your modded status chance. So you definitely do want to have some of that. So here's how it is normally. And then we use Zata's Whisper. And as you can see, it covers a huge area. The bullets are flying all over the place. And it makes this weapon AoE when it's not normally AoE like that. So look at that right there. With all this status chance, the bullets are going crazy. And this works in mission too. And not to mention, we're actually basically one-shotting these guys with no Riven now, guys. So this thing hits really, really hard. 
The Zata's Whisper is an amazing synergy with this thing, uh, which makes it more AoE. Like, it lets you do trick shots. Like, do, you, do you like trick shots? Because this thing lets you shoot around corners without even trying to. It's really fun. One of the most fun synergies I've actually found in the game myself. Um, not saying I discovered this, but like I, I really, really enjoyed this. So try it one more time. As you can see right there, the bullets just keep on going. So this is without even being fully stacked up. We have Merciless on here, which will give us increased damage on every kill. And also give, that, give us that increased reload speed and ammo. It, it's just fun. I would highly recommend this. And if they ever make a, a upgraded version of this weapon, expect it to actually have good crit stats and be a monster of a weapon. Not to mention, this is pretty good with mag bubbles too. If you want to use mags, uh, you know, not use the knockoff version of mags bubble, use actual mags bubble, her second ability. There you go. Real deadly. This thing hits really, really hard. Um, and as you can see in the gameplay footage right here, it's clear not an entire hallway. This is basically Archiplasmor stuff. Them saying this has 0.5 punch through, I don't even know if I believe that, honestly. Um, because it feels like a lot more punch through. And like I said, it's probably because the projectiles are all spread over the place. Um, but yeah, just going over the rest of the build, we do have a Bane mod on here. The Prime uh, Bane of the Grenier. Guys, for maximum damage, it is technically the best mod you can put in that slot, depending on what faction you're fighting. Uh, if you don't want to run Bane of the Grenier, just run uh, Prime Point Blank in that slot. It will be better. It will actually will technically be better against the Acolyte, because the Acolyte's not a Grenier. The Acolyte's not a Corrupted. The Acolyte's not a Corpus or whatever. So if you don't want to just you know go for maximum damage against the faction you're fighting, just put Prime Point Blank in that slot. You'll see a bigger damage number in the Arsenal screen here, but you're technically doing less damage overall to the actual Grenier enemies you're fighting, just because of how these multipliers apply. Um, so yeah, I... As far as me recommending this weapon to you, if you don't already have it, um, you know, maybe maybe you already like your Kuvazar, maybe you already like your Archiplasmor. This is a full investment build here, and we're even using Zata's Whisper for additional synergy. I just want to show how this weapon works with no crit at all. It's clearing through the steel path like it's nothing. So, um, you know, it's not exactly a Demolist killer. I'm not going to go ahead and say that, but, you know, this is this is some big chunks of damage right here. Um, and as far as its mob clearing, we're actually going to take this into account with Dantas Whisper as well, because that's actually the point of this video. Um, I have mob clearing on here as B. I'd say you could maybe even go with A. Um, if we're going to put weapons like the Kuva Czar and the Kuva Brahma as like an S tier mob clearer or an A plus mob clearer, this is this is definitely not as good as that. But it's it's you know it's more like a B plus A minus. Really, really good at clearing mobs, especially when you get some good void procs, making your bullets go around corners and take out enemies like you weren't even looking at, basically. As far as Acolyte clear speed, uh, if you're really lucky, I guess, maybe it could be a little bit better, but I'm going to go with C average. It takes, on a good day, it takes two shots to kill the Acolyte, which is, you know, we're putting weapons like the Trumna on this scale as well, where Trumna is S tier killing the Acolyte. This is going to be like a B minus or a C. Um, it's definitely average. It's not as bad as like a Bratton or something like that, uh, or a Slash proc, Heat proc, dependent weapon that's not good against Acolytes. So, you know, it could probably be a little bit higher than C. Max stats potential. Now, it's kind of unfair for me to include Zata's Whisper in this grade because this thing does not innately do void damage. Uh, but like I said, it has very high status chance and it's got impact, puncture, slash, and radiation. So if you count up all the elements and like status types we have on here, not counting Zata's Whisper, it's actually really high and you throw on one more with Zata's Whisper and it's very good max stats potential. Now, I wouldn't be recommending to use this as like a condition overload proc or for melee, um, but but honestly, really good. And in an overall score of B, and an above average weapon that I do recommend most people mess with. Now, am I going to say go for the max investment eight form of Zata's Whisper setup? You know, it is really fun. I wouldn't, like, you know, I'm not going to say go out of your way. It's not a must have, but if you are looking for some new fun little thing, this could be a fun synergy to let you have some fun using primaries on the steel path. Because it can easily, I mean, these guys are dying easily, so easily. I mean, I have an inf infinite magazine, basically, no ammo issues because of um, primary merciless. And, you know, it. the sound effects are awesome, too. I mean, I love the sound effects on this thing. Um, there's there's lots of skins you can use for it. If you have the uh, Dymo Supporter Bundle, like shotgun skin, This that looks pretty cool on this one with, like, a disc at the end of it. And, like, like I said, you could go for Viral Heat. You could even try to make a slash fo uh, weighted build work here. But the way I mod this thing, it's just, it's the one-shot kill gun. I don't really want to wait for slash procs when I use this thing. And not to mention, or not to forget, uh, corrosive damage is actually good against the Acolyte. That's what, that's what you want to mod against on Acolytes, is corrosive damage. So, the corrosive heat build seems like the best one to me. Um, and, you know, you could definitely get away with, like, probably six form on this. But this is an eight form of max power build. And we'll quickly show it with the um, 
the uh, Riven and the Simulacrum because the, the fun thing about this is more status procs, or more multi-shot rather, lets you get more potential void procs uh, covering more of the map. So we're going to just do what I do usually and replace Contagious Spread with my Riven, which is just Contagious Spread plus 140% multi-shot, honestly. Uh, and, you know, let's give it a shot. Galvanize Acceleration, really nice on this thing as it can easily kill enemies and just gives you more projectile flight speed, lets your bullets travel for longer, letting you get more potential void procs. So that's with no kills in the first place. So, yeah. Now, getting a second Zaku to feed the Helminth might be a big pain in the butt to you. Because, um, you know, I think Zaku... Re doesn't Zaku require, like, a Grandma Shard to build? That's that's a little bit annoying. But, you know, they get to the point where they're just dying in one hit. Now, we do have Avenger on here, but this thing has a 1.8 crit multiplier. It's really not doing that much, to be honest. Um, and it, it's just really fun. I mean, that covered basically all the enemies there in one shot. Didn't one-shot them all, but, um, you know, it technically could have. Like, it one-shot her. So, yeah, my new... Th it's one of my favorite synergies. Not new, exactly. This has been a thing for since he, uh, Zaku came out. Um, but, honestly, really fun. It's a good weapon for Mag, and a lot of people like the Archiplasma right now. Uh, but this one's still a really good one. So, either way, guys, I'll talk to you next time. Hope you found the video fun and helpful, and I'll see you next time. Peace.